we're on the cusp of an artificial intelligence revolution. You know, and, and like, if you query ChatGPT, I mean, it's pretty woke, you know? People did like experiments like, write a poem praising Donald Trump, and they, they won't. <laughs> but we ask, write a poem praising Joe Biden, and it will. Less than 24 hours ago, Joe Rogan released a new podcast with Elon Musk. So I went through the entire three hours and selected the most interesting AI clips. I'm headed to an AI safety, international sort of AI safety conference uh, later tonight, leaving in about three hours. Um, and um, I don't know, meet with the British Prime Minister and a number of other people. Um, so you have to say like, how could AI go wrong? Well, if, if, if AI gets programmed by the extinctionists, it will, its utility function will be the extinction of humanity. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, particularly if... They won't even think it's bad, like that guy. Right. Yeah. If you let it's AI... messed up. There's a lot of decisions that AI would make that would be very similar to eugenics. I mean, they would, well, there would be some radical changes in what people are allowed to and not allowed to do that allow them to survive that may be detrimental in terms of, like, pollution and things like that, but it may be the only solution they have in their area. I mean, maybe AI would come up with some sort of a different structure in terms of how they get power and resources, but... There's no shortage of power. Um, like, we talked about solar power for cars. The, the, the issue is the cars just have a very low surface area. There's one point in time where you, you were trying to get people to do a pause on AI. I mean, I, I signed on to a letter that someone else wrote. Um, I didn't think that people would actually pause. But you thought it was probably a good idea if they did. <sighs> I mean... I think so. Yeah, I mean... Making some sort of digital superintelligence seems like it could be dangerous. This mind virus, how it was able to propagate through the, the social media and being in control of social media platforms. Yeah. Think about what that means if that same mind virus gets in control of a superintelligence. And that is possible. Yeah, no, that's, what, that's actually what I think the biggest danger is for AI is that if AI is implicitly programmed, I don't think they do it explicitly, but implicitly programmed with values that lead to, that, that, that have led to the destruction of downtown San Francisco, and a bunch of these AI companies are in, the San, in, in either in San Francisco or in, in the San Francisco Bay Area, then uh, you could implicitly program an AI to believe that extinction of humanity is uh, what it should try to do. Mm. I mean, if you take that guy who was on the front page of the New York Times, and you take his philosophy, which is prevalent in San Francisco, um, the AI could could conclude, like he did, that there are eight, where he literally says there are eight billion people in the world, it would be better if there were none, and uh, engineer that outcome. Yeah. Well, especially if it doesn't need us anymore. If it becomes sentient and then has the ability to make its own decisions and make a better version of itself, it would find us to be nothing but a problem. Like, we have nothing to offer it's it a anymore. Risk. Yeah, it is a risk. So, um, you know, and, and like, if you query ChatGPT, I mean, it's pretty woke, you know? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, people did, like, experiments, like, write a poem praising Donald Trump, and they, they won't. <laughs> but we ask, write a poem praising Joe Biden, and it will. Yeah. So I'm like, mm, you know. That's a little sketchy. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's, unfortunately, it's programmed. And Yes. Yeah. It's programmed to, to be that way. Is it possible to overcome those problems? Is it possible that we could realize the dangers that are involved in creating this, but somehow or another engineer it in a way that would be ultimately beneficial to people? Or is that just a whim? That's a hope and a prayer, a utopian version of what could happen versus the most likely outcome? If you say, like, what is the most likely outcome of AI, I think the most likely outcome, to, to be specific about it, is, is a good outcome. Most likely a good outcome. But it's not for sure. So I think we have to be careful how we program the AI um, and make sure that it is not accidentally anti-human. Mm. So, um, it, you know, it, it, <laughs> the accidentally extinctionist AI. You wouldn't want that. Or even pruning. Well, that, that's, that is kind of how it works, is that these, um, what they call large language models, but, you know, it's really just a big pile of numbers. Um, and how you tune those numbers matters. Uh, you, it's, like, it's like pruning a tree. You know, you could have a mighty oak. You, you could be a little bonsai or a mighty oak. 
Mm. So, depending on how you prune it. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, if it decided to prune, yeah. if it decided the the, the real to prune issue, us? <laughs> perhaps. Yeah. We 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 cause problems. Uh, or maybe it would prune places in the world that are you know overwhelmingly polluting, like third world countries. Maybe it would decide that they're not very necessary, particularly if we use computers or AI or some sort of robotics to do human labor. And then you have these areas where human beings are doing this labor and they're polluting and, you know, there's all sorts of issues that come about because of that. You say, well, we just eliminate those people. We eliminate that issue and then we have 30% less garbage in the ocean. And then it makes this call. Yeah. Yeah. It's, no, just it's something we should be concerned about. I, and, and I, 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 I actually need to go. Oh, should I, I? Sorry, I need to go. Shall we wrap it up? Yeah, because I, I have to go to the airport. Um, I have to fly. I'm flying to London. Yeah, you were explaining that. Yeah, just um, for, for AI safety. The AI safety conference in London. So, yeah. I'm leaving in about an hour and a half. What do you um, hope to get out of this uh, conference? Like. I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm I'm just generally concerned about AI safety, but I it's like, what should we do about it? Um, I don't know. Um, have some 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 kind of regulatory oversight of some kind. It's like you can't just go build a nuclear bomb in your backyard. You know, that, that's against the law, and you get thrown in prison if you do that. How much so of a concern this is, is it? I think maybe more dangerous than a nuclear bomb. Really? Yeah. How much of a concern is it if another country develops it before us? <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know if, if that, the we should just be concerned about AI being um, anti-human. That's the sort of the thing um, that matters. So potentially, um, I'm saying it's 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 like a genie letting a genie out of a bottle. You know, it's sort of like a magic genie that can make wishes come true, except um, usually when they tell those stories, that doesn't end well for the person who oh, let the genie out of the bottle. Right. Do you think we're creating a life form? Um, yeah. I mean, it's something that is indistinguishable from in uh, from intelligence, an intelligent life form, certainly. I, I keep coming up against this idea, I keep banging it in my head that we're some sort of an electronic caterpillar. That's creating a cocoon, and we don't even realize what we're doing, and we're about to give birth to some technological butterfly. Yeah, uh, well, I think that's, we're on the cusp of an artificial intelligence revolution, and, um, you know, for the longest time, well, for a very long time, uh, we've been the smartest creatures on Earth. That's been our defining characteristic, I mean, I mean, speaking of martial arts, I mean, I, I don't think anyone should challenge a soul of Vaccarella to a fight. <laughs> you know, um, even if you're very good at martial arts, that's, that's going to kill you. Um, you know, it literally walks on its fists. <laughs> Those fists meet your face. It's game over. Um, so, but just, so we're not we're not stronger than a gorilla. We're not um, we're not faster than other animals. We're smarter. Um, now, what happens when there's something way smarter than us? <laughs>